Come on. All right. Oh, wait. Hang on. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Happy Monday. Um, we got so much going on. I just want to make sure you don't miss any of the opportunities. So the Strong Side Nutrition Challenge. I've gotten so many questions about this. So I just want to make sure that we go over a couple things. That's why I keep doing these videos because I want to make sure we're all clear on it and I'm going to give you some rock star information. But, um, so here's the deal. The deadline to register is tomorrow. Anytime tomorrow is fine, but tomorrow's the last day of the month. So January 31st is the last day to register because the challenge starts February 11th, Saturday, February the 11th. And the reason that the deadline to register is tomorrow is because I want to ensure success. I want to make sure you have everything you need. So I'm giving myself that 11 day window to make sure that everybody's shirts are ordered, that all the content's good, I have everybody on the mailing list, like the whole nine yards. So I'm not interested in having somebody join like two days before and then they get lost in the process along the way. Like I want to make sure you're taken care of, which means I need to have all of your information by today or tomorrow. So you can shoot me an email at the, uh, the email that's in the description of this video, or you can Facebook me, or you can do whatever, as long as we connect, and I tell you that you're signed up, all right? And then I get your shirt size and all that. And uh, it's 40 bucks for members, and it's 50 bucks for non-members. And that gets you uh, 12 weeks, it gets you the opportunity to win and access to all the prizes that we're uh, giving away. It uh, lets you come to our kickoff meeting, and uh, it gives you uh, weekly emails, updates, uh, the support group, all the information and education you can need for 12 weeks. This is not a here's your PDF, I'll see you later type deal. Like I'm going to be working with you for 12 weeks. You can access me at any time, uh, email, whatever you need, all right? Also, with the kickoff meeting, whether there's people doing it that are in town or out of town, whether they live in another state, like I think the farthest we have is like Arizona or something like that, um, and uh, or if you just can't be here, maybe your kid's got like bowling practice or something, I don't know. I'm gonna have everything audio recorded from the kickoff meeting. Now, attending the kickoff meeting, you get the best bang for your buck. Because you're gonna have me, you're gonna have some other people here, we're gonna go over everything, we have it in person. It's a little bit better experience. But if you can't make it, that's fine. I will have everything audio recorded with the PowerPoint presentation emailed out to you that day um, to make sure that you're good to go on your grocery shop and everything that you need and we will get you rocking, all right? So we're gonna get you taken care of. But the last day to register is tomorrow, all right? So you need to email me or Facebook me or whatever for tomorrow. Um, last thing before we get rolling is our Groupon is on sale until midnight. So it's, it's typically running on sale all the time. What I mean by that is it's on sale from being on sale. So we don't ever discount anything. Like our membership fees are never discounted or anything like that. But um, till midnight tonight is 35 bucks and uh, that gets your whole first month covered, all right? So 35 bucks, the link to that is also in the description of this video as well. Boom, all right, so I'm gonna say it again at the end of the video, just make sure. But here's the deal, all right, so talked a, lot, a little bit about last time uh, in the, one of the nutrition videos that we did is we talked about practice. Uh, for example, I know Johnny came in today and he was uh, talking about he's been practicing throughout the week, good job, Johnny. Uh, but. So what that meant is we went over like some five key tips, like drinking half your body weight in water, uh, um, eating three to four to, or four to five times a day, making sure that your meal prep is already good to go. Really just making sure that you didn't set yourself up for failure and say that February 11th is a life changing event and it really got you practicing a little bit. All right, cool. So now that you got that down, let's talk about a, cool, a couple cool things. Part of the nutrition challenge, whether it's lose weight or gain weight or whatever, is to create more of a healthy body. And uh, we want to make sure that not only are you losing the weight you want to lose or gaining the muscle you want to gain, but you're getting healthier because of it and you're able to perform better. All right. There are certain types of food that we're going to go through, uh, food, drinks, whatever, that allow your body to be better off. All right. And when it's better off, it's going to do better. So it's not necessarily just like eat less and exercise more. It's more about, okay, I, I need to eat this type of food or these macros or whatever, but I really need my food coming from these, let's call them vessels, meaning what the food is in. I need it coming from these vessels per se, because there's a big difference between eating your macros from Pop-Tarts and eating your mac macros from vegetables and meats and nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff. So here's the deal. Let's talk about coffee versus espresso. And I love me some caffeinated beverages. I shouldn't even say caffeinated beverages. I love like 
coffee, espresso. I just love the experience of it. I think it's great. Um, I'm not a big like monster energy drink type guy. Like I just, I, but man, I love coffee. All right, so I would never say don't drink it. But what are you trying to do? All right, so if we're gonna say coffee versus espresso, which one's healthier for me? Okay. <coughs> um, number one is uh, is you want to balance your pH level. So that's the big goal. pH is potential hydrogen. Not there's not a quiz at the end of this, but pH is potential hydrogen, and uh, perfect pH is between seven point three and seven point four five. All right. All you need to know is that anything above seven is alkaline per se. And it's very hard, and most would say that it's impossible for things like cancer cells or, or uh, sickness or basically not being in homeostasis to exist in an alkaline state. So a lot of research shows that the more alkaline that your body is, the healthier your body is because disease cannot exist in it. Anything below a six is considered acidic, and when your body is acidic, that's where a lot of its toxins come from, and it can start to harm itself, all right? That, that's all huge scientific lecture, but that's the nuts and bolts of it, all right? So that's like where you have alkaline water and all that kind of stuff. Well, what's gonna happen is if you drink coffee, all right? Coffee brews down, which keeps a lot of the acidity, which means that your pH levels are gonna be lower. And espresso brews up, which loses a lot of the acidity. So you get more of the caffeine and more of the bean of what you're looking for. Um, you don't get a lot of the acidity. So before we move on, why is that really important? Because the more homeostasis that your body is, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this in a second. Um, but when you keep your body in a homeostasis point, it produces the result that you want a lot better. If your body is constantly stressing, then it's not gonna give you the result that you want. But if you can do, to the best of your ability, a job that allows your body to stay in homeostasis, which is a nice, even point, the better your weight loss is gonna be, the better your muscle gain is gonna be, the better you're gonna run your triathlon, the better you're gonna climb your rock wall, whatever you wanna do, the more homeostasis your body is, the better. So if your pH levels are really low, then your body's gonna exert, exert a lot more stress. It's gonna make you feel a little bit more tired and run down, you might get sick a lot. There's gonna be a lot of negative stressors to that. If your body is more in an alkaline state, it's gonna be a lot more well. It's not gonna get sick, it's gonna feel better, it's gonna have a lot more energy, you're gonna be able to push all day. It's gonna be good times, all right? So coffee brews down and uh, espresso brews up. If you use K-cups or anything, you lose a lot of the quality. So those K-cups can be packaged for literally months before they get to you. Um, and, uh, and I'm not just making that up, those are like real, numbers, but they can be in the packages for literally months or weeks and weeks on end before you get it and you brew it. So you're really losing a lot of the, ca the caffeine and the freshness of it, and there's a lot of acidity inside those K-cups. Plus, you're getting it from plastic and all this kind of stuff. Super, if you know me, <coughs> if you know me, you, you know that I love this machine called an espresso. So Nespresso. Hey, and if, dude, if Nespresso, if you're listening, if you want a sponsorship, I'll I'll work it out, we'll do royalties or something. I mean, it's, I love you guys. All right, so Nespresso is a machine um, that it doesn't only make espresso, it can, but it can make coffee or espresso. So how it works is you get this Nespresso machine, which is a little bit more than the K-Cup machines, but I'll show you how it benefits you. So when you order your coffee, you're only gonna pay like, uh, you can get it, depending on what you get, you can get it for like under a dollar to a dollar ten per cup of coffee that you get versus going to Starbucks. Even I, I drink just a cup of coffee at Starbucks if I ever go, and that's already two fifty. So I'm already doubling my cost. If you get one of those crazy milkshakes, that's like five or six bucks. But <coughs> anyways, the Nespresso. So you buy the machine, you can get them at like Sur La Table, you can get them online. But um, you can't go buy the coffee. You have to order it online because it is packaged and shipped to you within three days, so the freshness stays still, um, and the, uh, the acidity is much lower. So it's a much healthier, constant brew. It's a lot more consistent, so you don't have any of that acid that's in there, and the caffeine is a lot higher too, because this is packaged and at your door in three days, versus uh, not so much. Also, and I know, I know way too much about espresso, when you do a K-cup and it puts one hole in the bottom, you're also only getting the majority of the saturation in the middle. So this doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with the brewing or the acidity, but when you drink those K-cups and it just pushes the water through the middle, you don't get everything that's in there. So a lot of people will brew it like two or three times or whatever to try to 
get everything out of it. This one punches 16 holes in the bottom. I know I told you I knew everything about it, right? So this one punches 16 holes in the bottom, so you get everything from it, and then it brews through it one time, and you get all the caffeine that you want. So you're getting all the caffeine that you want with lower acid rates and uh, all that kind of stuff. They do, they do make coffee too, all right? So I drink coffee out of this like every day, but they make coffee, espresso and stuff. Um, if you wanna do coffee, then you can do a French press. A French press does a really good job of not keeping any, any of the acidity in there. So a lot of people get really interested in this conversation, but looking at coffee versus espresso, if the goal is to keep the pH levels, potential hydrogen, above seven, but preferably around like a 7.3, so your body's in a more alkaline state, so it's a lot healthier, the goal would be to go more of the espresso route. I would recommend using an espresso machine versus like a K-cup or Keurig machine or something like that, but that doesn't have anything to do with the coffee versus espresso, but espresso, like an Americano um, or a latte or something like that, is gonna be better for you than coffee. And the reason for that is it keeps your body in more of a homeostasis point. So homeostasis, your body is nice and even, and it feels really great, and it's a nice point for your body to lose weight, gain muscle, whatever you want to do. That's all you really need to know about that. Drinking alkaline water and stuff like that can help too, but that's a whole nother, maybe that's a whole other topic. All right, so there's that. I love that. Okay, so now let's talk about the top five foods that'll make you fat and the top five foods that'll make you thin. So that got you really excited. Hey, before we go into this, let's talk about it. Um, what I said in the beginning of the video, the last day to register for the Strong Side Nutrition Challenge is tomorrow. So you gotta shoot me an email if you wanna register tomorrow. It starts February 11th, but the last day to register is tomorrow. 40 bucks for members, 50 bucks for non-members. That gets you your shirt, all your information. You can be anywhere in the world and do it. Um, if you wanna hear it again, just rewind to the beginning and I'll tell you what you get with it. Okay, so the top five foods to make you fat, all right? Agave nectar, granola, low-fat yogurt, salad dressing, and fruit juice or soda. Okay, so when you look at a lot of these, they all have one common thing, is that the sugar content is really high, or and or the effect on blood insulin levels is really, really high. So when we look at agave nectar, the, on a, you measure these things on a sugar sweetener scale, meaning that when you take them in, what's the effect to the insulin and or blood sugar, because those are two different things. You can have low insulin or low blood sugar and high insulin. Um, but the agave nectar spikes your blood sugar through the roof. And even though there might be some antioxidants or anything like that, you, you can get it from other sources. But the agave nectar will spike your blood sugar up. When blood sugar goes up, insulin goes up. Remember from the other video we did, insulin tells your body to store fat. So you don't want your insulin levels very high. Granola, that's just, just sugar in a can, like cereals, whatever. I understand that, that what is it, uh, Nature Valley makes like granola cereal and they put it in a green box and there's a sun on it and it looks fantastic. But just, why don't you just eat Captain Crunch? It tastes better. Um, it's gonna make you the same thing, all right? Um, low fat yogurt, that's a really interesting conversation. Not only the, the low fat yogurt, but skim milk too. So when you take in these dairy products, dairy does not elevate insulin very high, I'm sorry, does not elevate blood sugar very high. So if you measure it on a sugar sweetener scale like the agave nectar, it doesn't elevate your blood sugar very high. So a lot of people go, okay, no high blood sugar or BS content, uh, so I'm good, right? Well, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that your insulin isn't gonna go very high. So your blood sugar won't get very high, but the dairy that's in there will elevate your insulin through the roof. It's one of the highest insulin produ uh, producers that there is. So they take out the fat, to, so it's low fat, right? So it looks healthier. But the dairy that's in there and skim milk, low fat yogurt, whatever, shooting your insulin through the roof and you're just gonna gain all this midsection weight. Uh, There's a whole nother conversation. I can post a link to, some, to what I'm talking about too if anybody's interested. But you can go back and see a decrease in whole milk sales, an increase in skim milk sales, and a huge increase in American weight gain. It's very, very interesting. But the fat, the reason you want the fat in there is fat suppresses insulin. So if you're gonna drink milk, drink whole milk. If you're gonna get yogurt, get some fatty yogurt. But that fat will suppress your insulin so you're not storing fat. Remember what we talked about in the other videos. Fat doesn't make you fat, insulin is what's gonna make you fat. Because insulin's gonna tell your body to store fat, it's gonna tell you to store it in the midsection. All right. Um, salad dressing, because people just squirt that stuff on there like there's no tomorrow. That's how you make a, a, a 1400 calorie salad, is the salad dressing. You wanna use more of an oil-based uh, rather than like a ranch or a blue cheese or something like that. Try to use like a uh, 
vinaigrette or whatever. And there's a couple of tricks that we'll go through with the nutrition challenge, but instead of dumping it all on there, you can dip your salad in there. There's a whole laundry list of tricks, but you wanna take your shrimp and avocado salad and make it 2,000 calories, just get some old ranch dressing on there, and that's what we'll do it. Okay, fruit juice and soda. I mean, I really don't feel like we need to spend a lot of time on this, but this is huge. This is driving obesity up like 80%. It's just the sugar in those drinks. We are drinking our calories and drinking hundreds and hundreds of calories and drinking just sugar like crazy. Re the only thing I'm gonna to touch on from the video that I did before was that when we talk about sugar and we talk about insulin, think of it this way. You go to a restaurant, you get you some fruit juice or you get you a soda, okay. You eat one sandwich and you drink your fruit juice or soda. Let's pretend that the sandwich is 500 calories and the drink was 500 calories. That's a thousand calories, right? How come you couldn't eat two 500 calorie sandwiches? You can't eat two sandwiches that yield the same amount of calories as one sandwich and one drink. That doesn't make sense, right? It's what it does to your leptin and ghrelin hormones which are your hunger hormones in your stomach. We'll talk about that in the nutrition challenge. But um, those are just gonna spike up your insulin levels, not make you unable to control hunger. It's a laundry list of things. But the top five foods that make you the fattest. Okay, the top five foods that make you thin. I knew you were hanging on for this one. All right, so whole eggs. I swear, every time somebody eats egg whites, it makes me just feel like I have failed just everybody in the world of nutrition. That, that you think that egg, you know, I, I had thought we had passed that that the egg yolks are not gonna make you have cholesterol. It is the bagel and orange juice and cereal that you eat with your two eggs in the morning that give you the high cholesterol. I don't care what Cheerios says, that's what raises your cholesterol, it is the carbohydrate inside the, uh, um, the lipoprotein or the LDL, or that's a whole other conversation, but inside the cholesterol. Um, okay, so top five foods that make you thin. Whole eggs, salmon, Beef, uh, lean beef or chicken, uh, boiled potatoes, and avocados. All right, the reason for this is a couple things. We're gonna go back to this why in a second, but there's, a couple, there's about three main points. Number one is everything is very complex. Everything takes a very long time to break down. This stuff does not take a long time to break down. You can break that stuff down really, really quick, all right? And a big portion of all this has to do with gut health. So the healthier that your gut is, more than likely the healthier your body is because your gut works like a conveyor belt and it basically all this food just on a conveyor belt and you're picking food off of it, all right? I'm gonna go old school here, but if you guys have ever seen that I Love Lucy episode, I watch I Love Lucy, don't hate. But so, if you ever seen that I Love Lucy episode where uh, they're trying to make the chocolate and it's coming by like so fast and they, they can't make the chocolate, so they start putting it in their mouth and they go really fast. It's kind of like what your gut works like. If you didn't understand that reference, I'm sorry. But, uh, but that's kind of what your gut works like. So all this food is just flying by your gut. And the things that grab it are called villi and microvilli. We'll not, we'll not, we won't go any farther than that. But they kind of hang on there like this, like in your intestines, and they absorb the food as it comes through. And if it's not very bioavailable, meaning that your body can't absorb it, then you're not gonna absorb very much of it. So things like this just kind of pass through on that conveyor belt. Your body may or may not grab it. So you eat or drink these calories and you don't feel very good because it wasn't very bioavailable. You didn't absorb it very well. You ate 500 calories, but you only absorbed 100. How about if you ate 500 and you used 500? That would be kind of cool. So all these foods are very complex. They're also very whole, meaning they, can, they contain a lot of like salmon, like contains omega-3s and stuff that'll help with your gut health. But as far as like the protein complex, let's look at eggs, for example. Eggs get deemed the perfect gram of protein because they have all nine essential amino acids that your body does not make. And nine amino acids make up one gram of protein. So eggs have all nine essential amino acids to make up the perfect gram of protein. But it's a lot more complex, it's a lot more healing to your body, and it's gonna keep your body in homeostasis. So your body's in a more homeostasis point where it wants to lose weight. This is all a trust situation here. So as we look at these things, your body has no idea what you wanna to do to it. Your brain understands, I wanna go on a diet, I wanna lose weight, I wanna gain muscle, I wanna get jacked. Uh, your brain understands that, your body has no idea. So your brain understands you're watching this Facebook Live video right now, your body has no idea. Maybe it's hungry, maybe it's in a catabolic state, maybe it's an anabolic state, whatever it is, it's just trying to de develop processes to deal with that. 
your brain is trying to understand this, all right? So it's two separate deals. So you have to make sure that what you're eating puts your body in a homeostasis point, both in volume, like how much you're eating, like we talked about with the Strong Side Nutrition Challenge, and making sure that you're eating enough, and type, so the type of food that you're putting into your body, all right? Um, lean beef and chicken, kind of the same deal as eggs here that we talked about with being whole and complete proteins and all that. Boiled potatoes, you know, like there's no governing body that says these foods make you the thinnest, but I will say that maybe it's not so much boiled potatoes as it is a good solid starch. Um, having a starch post-workout or one or two times throughout the day is extremely beneficial to you. It will replete your muscles so much, assuming that you exercise. If you sit on the couch, then that's not gonna work. But assuming you exercise, if you replenish with that starch post-exercise or like a, a repleting meal throughout the day, you're gonna fill your muscle bellies up drastically and you're gonna feel great and you're gonna have that energy to perform well. And when your body has the energy to perform well, it's in more homeostasis. Um, avocado, so avocado contains so many good fats to your body, like a ridiculous amount. Um, a lot of people wanna eat bananas because they have a lot of potassium and uh, it does, it has 100 milligrams of potassium, but a banana has 30 grams of sugar. And there's 750 milligrams of potassium in an avocado with no sugar, so ta-da. Uh, but, so there's a lot of anti-inflammatory agents and omegas and fatty acids and all good stuff in there, and it's a lot more complex, a lot more whole. So, uh, just to recap, top five foods that make you fat, top five foods that make you thin, and a fun little conversation about coffee versus espresso, balancing your pH levels. The whole sum of it really is to talk about gut health and homeostasis. You balance your pH levels, you're in more homeostasis. You eat the right types of foods or vessels, then you have better gut health. You have better gut health and if your body's in homeostasis, you will lose all the weight you wanna lose and or gain all the weight you wanna gain, like muscle-wise. All right, so last day to register for the Strong Sound Nutrition Challenge is tomorrow, tomorrow. So just shoot me an email, we'll get your shirt size, get you all set up. Um, the link to the Groupon is in the description too because the Groupon is on sale until midnight tonight, all right? Tag your buddies in this video if you wanna see it and uh, happy Monday.